Gather around and I'll tell you how Beginning to the end, it'll all go down It'll start with riders on four-colored horses Or in the rise of the little ones for sea Though they're evil, you need to know They're not outside the Lord's control They'll only ride after the Lamb Tears the seals with his nail pierced When those horsemen ride You'll have to choose a side Choose wisely, my friends For today is the beginning of the end First of four, that horse will be white Tell you this, he don't belong to the light He's no redeemer or savior, all right But a false messiah, the antichrist Second of the four, that horse will be red. His going forth will leave so many dead. Peace will be taken from the earth and red. Will fall on the world, given over to bloodshed. When the source is rise, you'll have to choose a side. Choose wisely, my friends, for today is the beginning of the end. Third of the fourth, that horse will be black. After he comes, we'll never go back. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you, Lord Father God, uh, and as we gather in your name, Lord, I just come to you, Lord Father God, and just ask that you would use me, that you would use me, Lord Father God, and, and uh, in this hour or so, Lord Father God, that you would use me. And uh, just uh, be with us, Lord. Open up the eyes and ears of those who may be listening or watching right now, Lord. And any of those who watch this video later, may your name be exalted on this day, Lord, Father God. Every time that we do a Bible study, every time we go live, Lord, may your words resound, Lord. And may you be exalted and magnified, Lord. This is why we do this, Lord. So just give us this time, Holy Spirit, as we gather in your name to fellowship and also to uh, speak your words, Lord, Father God. And we pray all these things in your mighty and precious name and the name that's above every name. In the name of Yeshua, our Lord, God, and Savior. And we all say, Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. I tried uh, to do what you uh, what was uh, actually advised for me to do, to check out my sound. And uh, it kind of throws me off, okay, especially in prayer. Uh, but I'm listening right now, and it, it's kind of strange. <laughs> But I can hear myself, which means that you guys can hear me. Uh, and so uh, may this be a blessing for you on this preparation day, okay? And uh, once again, you guys probably said, oh, there goes David with happy preparation day. Uh, thank you, uh, Games Official. Games Official. Everything is clear. Uh, I tried it. I used uh, actually Bluetooth. And, uh, but it kind of threw me off, okay, because it's like double sounding. I'm hearing myself. I'm not too used to that, okay? So, um, yes, it's working. Thank you for helping me with that. But I can't keep them on because uh, I just cannot do that. But I will be able to see uh, another way. I will set it up to see the comments coming in uh, somehow or another. So, uh, thank you, Games Official. Amen. Amen and amen. Uh, Mahir, Mahit, right? I think it was Mahit or Mahir, Mahit. Uh, anyhow, I, 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 I say happy preparation day. What do I mean happy preparation day? Okay, every Shabbat, every Sabbath, every Friday, okay, we know that Friday evening uh, on the Lord's calendar and the Lord's timing, okay, as times and seasons begins, yes, Mohit, Mohit. Uh, at the beginning on Friday evenings, uh, we go ahead and start at sunset or at twilight, uh, begins the Shabbat day and to keep it holy. Okay, so um, so I always Friday mornings lately, I've been saying happy preparation day. Why do I say that? Because today actually in Israel, Jerusalem, where the Lord will be returning, okay, his kingdom will be set up in Jerusalem. Uh, okay, and the Mount of Olives, Mount Zion right there. And, and it's just going to be amazing. So every, every, every Shabbat, every Friday during the morning, okay, they prep, they prep prepare okay they get the food ready they get things ready in order and then come at twilight they begin their their uh, shabbat dinner their shabbat prayers uh you know there's readings that come out every week 
So, yeah, right now they're preparing for Shabbat and you can do it anywhere you live. It doesn't matter. The Lord wants you to do it. You know, it's it, when it says he commands you to do it, you know, it is a commandment. Yeah. Number one. OK, but it's not like, oh, he commands us. Now we got to do it. No, it's it should come from your heart. OK, uh, that's what he means. OK, it, it should come truly from your heart to honor him from everything he created. You know, everything, the food we eat, uh, the water we drink, the sun we take in, the beauty of nature. He he created all those wonderful things, you know, and uh, and he just wanted and he rested on the on the seventh day. OK, which is which is at come evening time. OK, so. Uh, with that, I, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, even those who are not making comments, I hope that you guys are doing well. Uh, Mohit, uh, I hope everything's going well. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and show you a, a slide here, okay? And I said I might be doing this every Friday, and I'm, maybe I'm going to start. I think I am going to start doing this uh, before we start the reading in the book of Jubilees, okay? I'm going to be showing you the weekly reading, okay? Uh, the weekly reading. Now, uh, here it is right here. And so let me make that big for you. The weekly reading. So right here I put God God Friday morning, okay? Uh, it might be evening or afternoon, wherever you may be. It might be evening already. Uh, we know it's already getting close to actually Shabbat evening in Israel and Jerusalem. So, you know, depending on where you're at in the world, okay, uh, get prepared, okay, for Friday evening, okay, when evening comes, okay. So uh, to just celebrate, you know, even if it's in your own home with your family, just say Shabbat Shalom, you know, just say Shabbat because the Lord sees it and he honors it big time. Okay, so uh, I put here, uh, it's morning where I'm at. It's morning time. And so I'm going to prepare today my Shabbat dinner. I'm going to prepare myself. And uh, so I say God Friday morning. Okay, instead of good Friday morning, I put God Friday morning. Okay, because every day belongs to the Lord. He gives us breath every day, which is a miracle in itself. When we wake up and we take a breath. Uh, and so I say God Friday morning to everyone. Happy Shabbat preparation day. OK, so this week's Torah portion. OK, uh, the Torah, wouldn't you say it's the first five books of the law is the first five books of the Bible. So uh, if you don't know what Torah means, OK, that's what it is. Uh, you can say Genesis all the way through. You know, it's the first five five books okay and uh this week's torah portions is devarim okay we're going to be reading oh it's friday night for games official it's friday night so see your shabbat games official um uh, mohit your shabbat already started so you know get in custom get in get it used to it the lord wants us to actually uh the these these uh, Moedim these days are set and he wants us to actually celebrate them according to his ways, not man's ways. OK, according to his calendars, his times, his seasons. So go ahead right now. It doesn't matter if you're not used to it. Just start by saying Shabbat Shalom, my Lord. Shabbat Shalom. It's already evening. It's nighttime for you. So it's already begun. It doesn't matter where you live. Remember, it's already started for you. For me, it's morning time. Come evening time, I'm gonna light a candle. I'm gonna say thanks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, say the Shema, and then I'm gonna watch a Friday evening service, and I'm just gonna prepare my dinner, prepare for Shabbat. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you live. You don't have to live in Israel. This is my main point. So you could say right now, Mohit, Shabbat Shalom. There you go, Shabbat Shalom, my Lord. So that the Lord sees your heart, Mohit. He sees your heart. And so now he's going to say, oh, look at, look at Mohit. He's going to say, look at Mohit. You know, he never did this before. Shabbat Shalom. He's going to recognize your heart. He's going to say, all right, all right. You know, and for right now in the heavenlies, I just want to make a point of this and I won't go too much more into this. So for sake of time, uh, as we do this reading today, but, you know, even in the heavens above, you got to understand that when the earth, when God made the earth in six days, on the seventh day, he, re, he he rested. The angels in heaven rejoiced. And this is a day, it's scriptural, that the heavens rejoice on his day of rest. He didn't stop. We are going to be celebrating the Shabbat into the millennial kingdom. There's scripture that proves that. And also into the new heavens and new earth. 
why, why wouldn't you want to celebrate a day that he created all things? You know, why wouldn't you? And he got so much more for us. The new heavens, the new earth, the millennial kingdom. So for now, it's a dress rehearsal. So why wouldn't you? He gave us this day for a reason. The angels in heaven right now are rejoicing. Because why? Because it's God's calendar. Okay, we're in unison with the angels in heaven, rejoicing, uh, praising him on this uh, day of rest, this last day of his, not man's, his calendar. Okay, so uh, great. That is awesome. Shabbat Shalom from Mohit. Praise God. Uh, Connie, Connie Cook. Good evening. Yes, right now, Connie Cook, you could say, be saying to the Lord, Shabbat Shalom, Lord. You know, uh, I, I love you. Thank you for creation. You can start by doing that. It's, it's amazing. Right now, everything is shut down in Israel. Everything is shut down. All the, the business as usual, all the, you know, not all places of the land. We know that. Uh, but in, in Jerusalem, everything shut down for the Shabbat. They celebrate it every Friday, every Friday. Every, it's been ages since everything, all the commerce, all the businesses, they shut down on this day. It's, it's very interesting. It's like silence all over the city. Imagine if you live in a city, right? All right. Uh, good evening. Good evening, uh, Harold Bailiff. Uh, it's always good to have you, Harold. Uh, my regards to your beloved wife, Regina. It's always good to have you with us, Harold. I hope everything's fine. And so every, um, let me go ahead and put this on. Every, every, uh, it's very interesting that I saw a document documentary where the, everything, all the businesses and everything shut down, you know, in preparation. And all, uh, actually at evening time, they're getting prepared. They block off the streets. They block off the streets. There's no, there's no driving around. It's, it's just amazing. And they just fully give the day to the Lord. You know, it's, it's just amazing. It's very amazing. And I, I saw that. I go, wow. I didn't really know they did that. But yes, they do. They follow Shabbat, and they have been for a long time. Maybe they all don't realize what it stands for. Uh, but, you know, it's going to come the day, you know, we pray that they will believe in Messiah, you know, because most of them don't. Uh, but we pray for that. Amen. And we're all going to be celebrating Shabbat together. So happy preparation day. Ebenezer uh, says hi. Hello, Ebenezer. I, I, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is David. We do a, a, a reading out of the book of Jubilees. It's uh, say you could say Genesis, but not really. But it's just a, it's it's a beautiful book. You know, we point out different things in the book, and it does it does uh, speak highly of his commandments, his laws, his feast days. So this is what I like his Jubilees. Uh, so this is what I like about this book. Okay, so uh, welcome, Ebenezer. Ebenezer, welcome. And so this is, I, I just want to say every week, I'm going to be bringing you the Torah portions, okay? So this, you write them down, write them down, or, you know, when I go to the next slide, go ahead and write these down, and then go ahead and read them tonight. Uh, Games of uh, Mohit, uh, Connie, go ahead and write them down and read them tonight. It's the Torah the Haftarah and Matthew, okay? So I'll explain that to you, Ebenezer, right now. I'll explain to you. Um, but anyhow, write these things down. It's a weekly It's a weekly portion. So we're, we, it goes through all the five books, portion by portion, okay? Every year, it starts over again. It starts over. It just goes through them. Uh, so today is this week's Torah portion, is uh, words, okay? Devarim, Devarim in the Hebrew means words, okay? So the Torah portion is Deuteronomy 1 through 322. Yeah, chapter 1, okay? And this is starting. It's a good day for you guys to start, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 1, okay? We're, it goes through all of Deuteronomy every week. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a portion, okay? So this week it starts Deuteronomy, okay? Very powerful book. One chapter one uh, through chapter three, three chapters uh, and uh, at verse three twenty two it ends there. And next week will be next week's portion. Okay, so the haftarah is is prophets. Okay, reading from the prophets. So there's a section of the Torah, a section of the prophets, which Isaiah 
chapter 1, 1 through 27. Very powerful book, Prophet Isaiah. So this begins with Isaiah. It always reads a reading from the prophets. And last but not least, the, the gospel, okay? So we, these are messianic believers. These are for us, okay? We've been grafted in as believers in Yeshua, okay? So we know that we read the portion a little differently from those who do not believe in Messiah. So there is a gospel portion, and it's a very powerful gospel portion. I've already read these. I read them every week. So it's Matthew 24, 1 through 22, okay? So I highly recommend you read these uh, this weekend or whenever you have the time. Uh, maybe next time I'll give you more time to read them. But then becomes a Friday evening, okay? So it's already evening for you, Connie Cook. It's already uh, nighttime. And you don't have to do this, okay? If the Lord, if you if you don't, I'm not saying that you have to, but it is a blessing and the Shabbat is commanded by our Lord, but he doesn't want you to do it forcefully, okay? So if the Lord puts it in your heart, well, choose the things uh, that the Lord wants us to do. I would, I would uh, recommend that the most, okay? Because we're not to honor men or women. We're not to honor man, but we are to honor our Lord God and Savior, okay? So um, I would recommend that you begin doing this, amen? So um, we're going to go ahead and go through the next. I'm just going to read this through really quick. And uh, uh, hold on. I don't think. <laughs> this is the Devarim. Um, Devarim is actually the word that we have, the weekly reading, the Devarim. It tells you what this means. Devarim is both, uh, so this is the portion summary. It says the Devarim is both the title for the last book from the scroll, from the Torah, and the title of the first Torah portion therein. Devarim means words, okay? The English-speaking world calls this book Deuteronomy. The Hebrew title for the book comes from the opening phrase of the book. These are the words, the Devarim. These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness. Deuteronomy 1.1. 1, 1. One ancient name for the book of Deuteronomy is Mishnah HaTorah, which means repetition of the Torah. This is similar to Greek Septuagint named Deuteronomos, which means second law. The English name Deuteronomy is derived from Deuteronomos. The book of Deuteronomy is dominated by Moses, uh, Moses' farewell address to the children of Israel as he urges them to remain faithful to the covenant and prepares them for entering Canaan uh, during the course of the book. Moses reviews the story of the giving of the Torah at Sinai and the trip to the promised land. Uh, remember, this, this actually points to the millennial kingdom, okay? The, uh, the greater exodus. It's going to be all over again, and we're going to enter the land of milk and honey, which refers to the millennial kingdom, okay? So a lot of prophetic messages throughout these scriptures. Uh, I'll be pointing those things out in another time. Sometimes I do it. So a lot of prophecy within uh, this, these books of Deuteronomy, the Torah, so much prophecy in these books, okay, that all point to what? They all culminate into the new heavens, the new earth, the millennial kingdom here on earth. It has a lot to do with it, okay? Uh, so it says, reiterates several laws of Torah and introduces new laws. So the book seems to follow the general pattern of an ancient near uh, modern... Uh, I can't read it because I didn't put it on my screen to read it. So you guys can read it for yourselves all the way to the bottom there. I can't see it no more. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can remove myself so that I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Now I can see it. Okay. I'm sorry. So it says, uh, it says, Moses reviews the story of the giving of the Torah at Sinai and the trip to the promised land reiterates several laws of the Torah and introduces new laws. The book seems to follow the general pattern of an ancient Near Eastern Covenant Treaty document. As we study the first week's reading from the book of Exodus, the children of Israel are assembled on the plains of Moab across the Jordan from Jericho. So that was the portion summary of this week's reading from the Torah uh, from the Haftarah and also from the gospel, okay? So very important, all right? So let's go ahead and uh, 
and we'll go ahead and and, and uh, start from the Book of Jubilees. Now, uh, Ebenezer wants to know. Okay, so just a quick rundown, Ebenezer, for sake of time. The Book of Jubilees is actually Genesis. Okay, and it is uh, actual in in, in the in the um, Ethiopian Church. Okay, in Ethiopia, uh, close over there, they still count it as canon. Okay, it's it's a part of their scriptures in the Ethiopian Bible, which is our Bible, but in Ethiopian, they still have this book. Okay, it's a it's apocrypha. Okay, it's the apocrypha apocryphal book, uh, the Jewish literature. Okay, apocryphal book. It, it goes. It coincides along with Genesis. And once again, in, in, in Ethiopia, it actually still is canon, and they do teach from this book as being Bible, okay? So um, we know what happened. Many apocryphal books were taken out, uh, in, uh, in, um, and I, I always forget the name of that. So a lot of books were taken out. Sometimes they say that they shouldn't have taken them out. They went ahead and take, took them out as far as them not being scriptural. But we know we've been going through this book of Jubilees, which coincides with Genesis, okay? And it speaks of many things that just, it coincides uh, with the book of Genesis, okay? We know we have the book of Genesis, but this is a book that also explains a lot of things. So that's what the book of Jubilees is. You can read it. It doesn't harm you. It doesn't mislead you. It doesn't harm you in any way. We've been going through chapter after chapter. And uh, just to show, you know, there's been those that started at chapter one with me here. And uh, so far, I, I don't think if, if anybody's, nobody has told me, David, this is misleading me. Because it's all scriptural. It's all scriptural. No one is saying because, you know, we know the word of God. And this is why we, we bring you scripture along with it. Like today, we're going to be doing the same thing, okay? From the New Testament and from the Old Testament, we've been going along, okay? So there's nothing wrong with reading this book, okay? So if you really want to know the extent of this book, uh, go back on my channel. Go back to chapter 1. OK, I do an introduction. I do an introduction. Uh, so you would have to go back to that number one video, chapter one, Ebenezer, and uh, read the introduction. And it's going to tell you exactly what the Book of Jubilees is, when it was written. OK, so uh, just go ahead and go back uh, to 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 video number one. OK, but stick around. It's going to be a great reading. So check it out for yourself. And you'll see it talks about jubilees. It talks about a lot of feasts. It talks about uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, 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 Isaac being Israel. Now we're going to pick up with his sons, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. So, you know, it's just it's just coincides. It's very interesting and very biblical, very biblical. And once again, and uh, I believe other places also still have it as Bible. OK, as canon. OK, as canon. OK, so uh, in other words, there's places that didn't follow and take out books. OK, when they really weren't supposed to be taken out. I, I don't know. That's what I just say. That's my opinion. OK, so uh, we still have Bibles with the Apocrypha in them still. OK, we have Bibles with the Apocrypha. They didn't take those out till later. OK, so there is still Bibles with the Apocrypha in it. OK, so very, very important. Very important. So. Anyhow, okay, I hope that kind of explains, but if you want further, further uh, reading of what the Book of Jubilees is, uh, actually the Jubilees is a count also, 49, it's a count of 49, the Jubilee count, uh, weeks of seven, okay, weeks of seven, which we know there's Jubilee counts, uh, it's, a, it's a time, uh, time uh, that God placed on, 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 uh, on years, which is seven years or seven times seven, there's always a jubilee. Just like um, a good example would be um, from first fruits or Passover, they count 49 days, which is a jubilee count. A count, okay? Now the jubilee is not celebrated no more because all the 12 tribes of Israel are not united, they've been separated. So the jubilee was actually a command to to celebrate the Jubilee, and they did. Okay, they did before, but they no longer celebrate it. So they say once the millennial kingdom starts,
they will be celebrating the Jubilee once again, okay? Because all the 12 tribes of Israel will be restored and they will begin in the millennial kingdom, okay? So, but we have indication uh, from, from, uh, from Passover to actually Shavuot, which is Pentecost. Uh, we get 49 days, okay? So that's a Jubilee count. It's a count of seven times seven is 49, that is a jubilee count. So on the following day, when that jubilee count was completed, it was 50, okay, where we get Pentecost, where we get Shavuot in the Hebrew, Pentecost in the Greek, okay? That was the leaving of the Holy Spirit. That's one prime example of what, prime example of what the jubilee is, okay? It's one, one, one point of example. You can read it in Leviticus uh, chapter 23, what the jubilee is, okay? So I hope that explains to you lightly, just covers the, the, you know, the surface of what a Jubilee is. So the book of Jubilees is just a count. Um, so uh, also a count and other things. OK, so for further explanation, what is a Jubilee? Uh, go ahead and go to Leviticus 23 and I'll tell you what a Jubilee is. OK, and how they celebrated it. OK, so and also in Daniel, it has a Jubilee count concerning the end times, okay? Seven times 70 is 490. We're at 483 on God's calendar of the seven times 70, okay? It's also a jubilee, okay? Uh, some, some go as far as to think it's gonna be this year, but no, it's not. Certain things have to come to pass, okay? But it is a count, okay? So, and it does count that time. In, in this book, it says, okay, on the whatever, fifth jubilee of the seventh week, okay, it goes into this, as you will be seeing, okay? And so, um, uh, yeah, okay, amen, yeah. So there it is, yeah, I'm reading, it's canonical. Yeah, so um, there, 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 ha there, there you have it, it's canonical. So like I said, there's nothing wrong with reading this book. It's actually very, very good, okay? And uh, it's actually very interesting, okay? And it's very good. And it aligns. We've been doing that for a long time. At first, we're just lining everything up. Okay, this is where we're at in Genesis. This is where we're at. This is where we're at. And it gets you, it gives you just a little fuller meaning. It just, it just gives you a little fuller meaning, okay? So I, I found it to be a blessing for me. It's not the first time I read it. I found it to be a blessing for me. And it did me no wrong. It did me no wrong at all. Okay. It's not made up stories. Okay. It's not made up stories. Uh, it's not the Talmud. Okay. It's not the Talmud. It's not made up stories or anything like that. Not talking down, but it's not made up stories. Okay. So um, other, in other words, this is for you, Ebenezer. I wasn't going to explain this, but I'm doing this for you because we have a lot of reading to do. Okay, we've already got we've already been on 30 minutes. <laughs> and so we have a lot of reading to do. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and begin chapter 32. Okay, so yes, yes, it says, yeah, I'm reading it's canonical in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. So I'm, I'm just saying I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't steer you wrong. It is canonical in the Ethiopian church, okay? And just go, you know, just you could do further studies why they took apocryphal books out. Uh, it wasn't all all good. It wasn't good uh, reasons. Uh, it just, I'm not going to go into that, uh, but you will find out, okay, when, when books were taken out of the Bible, it was for other reasons. Uh, it wasn't totally honest. Uh, for the most part, we do have great books in the Bible. Don't get me wrong, but there's other reasons, okay? So I'm going to let you investigate that, and maybe someday I'll, I'll talk to you about that, okay? But in the in the Ethiopian church, yes, it's still canonical. Okay. Um, do Messianic Jews read Talmud also? Some do. Some do, and I don't, I don't um, agree, agree, because actually it's Bab it's it's... It's the time of the Babylonian captivity, okay? So when the when the Jews went into captivity for 70 years, the Lord took care of them, okay? And they allowed, uh, the Babylonians allowed them, but we know the Babylonians worshipped false gods, okay? 
pagan gods. We know this for a fact, okay? So when they were taken into captivity for 70 years, uh, those customs of the Babylonians rubbed off on them, even though they were allowed to, to uh, serve and worship God, okay? But after a long time, 70 years is a long time. So they took certain uh, holidays, traditions, uh, some even a month that they, you know, names that, that were Babylonian names. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is one of them. It was the New Year's of the Babylon, of Babylonia, the New Year's, Rosh Hashanah was actually, uh, it was a Babylonian New Year, okay? And they placed it on the, the Feast of Trumpets. That shouldn't have been done. I, 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 my opinion is strongly against that, okay? So the Talmud is readings uh, that explain the Torah, okay? But it was during the, the time of the Babylonian captivity. And, and uh, it's just, you can read the Talmud, okay? If you're interested in reading it, but there's some Messianic Jews that read the Talmud, and I, I wouldn't recommend it because, uh, like I said, it does. It was in a period of time when they were serving with uh, Babylonian captivity, which they worshipped false gods. Okay, so there's a lot of controversy in that. Some Messianic churches don't do it. They don't read. They don't. They don't believe in it, uh, and so they they don't read from the Talmud. No, they don't. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. I don't know much about Messianic Judaism. Okay. Oh, okay. Messianic Judaism is this, okay? Just just so you'll know. Just so you'll know. Messianic, okay? Messianic is, if you could say Christian. Okay, so you say, what? It's the same as a Christian. Yes, it is, okay? Because all you're saying is Messiah. Messianic Messiah, right? Who's Messiah? Messiah is Jesus Christ. Messiah, there's only one Messiah. That's Yeshua. So if you break down the word Messiah, Messianic, or you say Christian, what are you saying? Christian, you're saying Christ. Who is the Christ? It is the Messiah. The Messiah is the Christ. The Messiah is the Christ. The Christ is the Messiah. So you're just saying Christian, okay? You're saying you're a believer in Christ. Messianic, you're saying you're a believer in Messiah. You don't have to be Jewish to go to a Messianic church. You have to be a believer in Messiah. Okay, let me break it down this way. Acts chapter 2, or you could say uh, the believers, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, the disciples, they were all Jewish. Okay, they were all Jewish. And they believed in, they walked with Messiah. Jesus was Jewish. Jesus was Jewish. Okay, I hope you know that. Yeshua was Jewish, okay? And uh, he was the king of the Jews. He will be the king of the Jews. And we have been grafted in as Gentiles. So just to make certain, okay, I, I attend a Messianic church, right? And so there's, there's I, I, I'm not saying, I'm just going to put races, okay? We all know, okay? But anyhow, there's Chinese there. There's Mexicans there. Okay, there's there's blacks. Okay, there's there's uh, Europeans. Okay, so it's not your race. You don't have to go to Messianic church. And the and the and the and the rabbis and the elders there, they don't say nothing. They don't say, oh no, this just belongs to the Jews. No, it's not like that. It's not 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 like that at all. Okay, they don't force. They should not force anything on you. Okay, and the one I go to, they don't. Now I have heard that some messianic uh, uh, temples actually force you to do things, okay? And that's not, not correct, okay? But they do read from the Torah. They do read from the gospel. It's, uh, you got to understand, a messianic Jew, if you just make it easy, a messianic Jew is actually the disciples, okay? And all the followers of Yeshua, okay? Even those that were being persecuted, they were met the followers of Yeshua. Ever since Yeshua walked the earth, those are Messianic Jews. Those are believers in Yeshua, okay? So it doesn't matter what race you were from, okay? So you can go to a Messianic church. I hope I explained that well, because they were all Jewish. All the disciples were Jewish, okay? So that's a prime example of who a Messianic Jew is, okay? Like I said, you don't have to. The gospel went out from there. 
That's why the gospel went out from there. And there shouldn't have been a disconnect because it's the same ways the Lord was telling them, follow my ways, follow my commands. He didn't get rid of his Torah. He didn't get rid of, no way, no way. This is him himself. He didn't get rid of this Torah. Okay, so there was a very big disconnect from that. And as we see in churches today, there's been a very, a, I call it the great disconnect. And he's gathering them back. He's saying, get back to my ways. Get back to my ways. How, how you know, he's like, you guys shouldn't have never disconnected from me. Now look what happened. Okay, so yeah, so the, 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 the disciples said the same thing, okay? So that's 35 minutes and we're, this is going to be a long one then. <laughs> but if you have any questions, I'm here to answer you. So I don't mind. I don't mind at all, Ebenezer. I don't mind, okay? Uh, so, but let's start this reading, okay? So we, And after, Ebenezer, if you want to uh, go ahead and uh, stick around to the end, uh, we do uh, fellowship, okay? We don't just end it and that's it. Uh, whoever wants the fellowship, whoever wants to log off, they can log off. Uh, but, you know, we stick around, we fellowship, we ask questions, we talk about things, okay? So, um, yeah, so we could gather together. If you want to stick around, Ebenezer, after this chapter's reading, if you want to kind of see, wait a minute, yeah, this is good, this is good, then go ahead and stick around and listen to the reading, okay? All right, with that, let's go ahead and start. Uh, the book of Jubilees, chapter 32, okay? Chapter 32. All right, here. Here we go. Here we go. Let me get there. And chapter 32 of the book of Jubilees, okay? So here we go. Uh, and he stayed. Let me take a drink of water first. <clears throat> okay, chapter 32. And he stayed that night at Bethel. And Levi dreamed that he had ordained and made him the priest of the Most High God. And that's what happened. You see, right off the bat, Levi, we know who Levi, the Levitical priesthood came from the Levites. So this is the son, okay, of of Jacob, which is Israel, Levi, very powerful, the Levitical priesthood. And then it talks a lot about Judah. And from the land of Judah, Judah is another son of Israel, right? And he became what? The line of the tribe of Judah came from Judah. Very powerful. Okay, so here we pick up and it says, and he stayed that night at Bethel and Levi dreamed that they had ordained and made him the priest of the most high God him and his sons forever and he awoke from his sleep and blessed the lord and jacob rose early in the morning on the 14th of this month and he gave a tithe a tithe of all that came with him both of men and cattle both of gold and every vessel and garment yeah he gave tithes to all and in those days, Rachel became pregnant with her son, Benjamin. And Jacob counted his sons from him upwards, and Levi fell to the portion of the Lord. And his father clothed him in the garments of the priesthood, and it filled his hands. And on the 15th of this month, he brought to the altar 14 oxen from among the cattle, and 28 rams, and 49 sheep, and seven lambs, and twenty-one kids of the goats as a burnt offering on the altar of sacrifice, well-pleasing for a sweet savor before God. This was his offering, in consequence of the vow which he had vowed, that he would give a tenth, with their fruit offerings and their drink offerings. And when the fire had consumed it, he burnt incense on the fire over the fire. And for a thank offering, two oxen and four rams and four sheep, four he goats and two sheep of a year old and two kids of the goats. And thus he did daily for seven days. And he and all his sons and his men were eating this with joy there for seven days and blessing and thanking the Lord 
who had delivered him out of all his tribulation and had given him his vow. And he tithed all the clean animals and made a burnt sacrifice, but the unclean animals he gave not to Levi his son, and he gave him all the souls of the men. Now, I highlighted this because there, there is a fact, uh, and I'm not going to go too heavily into this, but they're still clean animals and they're still unclean animals. And this was uh, from the Lord himself. He gave us, it was, it, it's the dietary laws about what animals are clean and what animals are unclean. Okay, this still is in effect. Okay, once again, he did not abolish his laws all the way down to the uh, to the dietary laws. Okay, so uh, just like the, the, the animals, I'm not going to get too big too deep into this, but there's a fact uh, that the, the animals that were on the, the, the Noah, okay, Noah uh, and the animals that came off the ark were all clean animals, okay, uh, because he was going to be using them for sacrifice and also eating, okay, so these dietary laws have been around for a long, long time, and they continued through Noah, okay, and they continued here, so it says, and he tithed all the clean animals and made a burnt uh, sacrifice, but the unclean animals he gave not to Levi his son, and he gave him all the souls of the men. And Levi discharged the priestly office at Bethel uh, before Jacob and his father in preference to his ten brothers. It says, and he was, and he was a priest there, and Jacob gave his vow. Thus he tithed again the tithe to the Lord and sanctified it, and it became holy unto him. And for this reason, it is ordained on the heavenly tables as a law for tithing again the tithe to eat before the Lord from year to year in the place where it is chosen that his name should dwell. And, this, and to do this law... There is no limit of days. It was an offering, okay, an offering to the Lord. It is still done. We know, uh, of course, not by animals, but there's, there's, there's still a tithe there, right? The first fruits or whatever you have, we give, okay? Because why? Because the Lord has given to us to help others. So we give, okay? So however you do that is however you do that. If you tithe to your church, what a blessing, okay? But the Lord wants us to give back, okay? Uh, in other words, to help, okay? What the blessings he gives us, amen? So, you know, we know the animals uh, right here. It was just the first of the animals or first of the first fruits of their harvest. Okay. It's always good and always leave some for the poor. It's just a blessing. Okay. So it's ordained on the heavenly tables as a law for the tithing again, the tithe to eat before the Lord from year to year. We also read this uh, with, um, and, um, Ah, oh, God, it just left my, my brain. Uh, Melchizedek, okay? Abraham, even Melchizedek, they say he's a, he was like a Yahweh incarnate uh, because he had no, he they didn't know where he came from. He had no lineage. So it's a perfect portrayal. Uh, but, the, but Abraham, our forefather, felt it the need to give him, okay? He was the king of Salem, Melchizedek, okay? So he gave him a tithe. Okay, because this tithing was set on the heavenly tables. So Abraham, our forefather, was very anointed and, and he followed the laws of God. Remember, those Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all followed the Lord's commandments, his ways, his laws, his feast, his Moedim. Okay, all of them did. All the prophets did. All those in Israel, in Jerusalem, to this day, they know the laws. Okay. So it says right here that the law was put in place. So Abraham felt it. He said, okay, I'm going to give to this Melchizedek, okay? So we're not going to get into that teaching today, but it's very powerful. He gave him a tenth, a tithe. Why? Because he knew it was the law. This was the law of God, amen? So it says, ordained on the heavenly tables as a law for the tithing again, uh, the tithe to eat before the Lord from year to year in the place where it is chosen that his name should dwell. And to this law, there is no limit of days forever. This ordinance is written that it may be fulfilled from year to year in eating the second tithe before the Lord in the place where it has been chosen and nothing shall remain over, over from it from this year to the year following. 
for in its years shall be the seed to be eaten until the days of the gathering of the seed of the year, and the wine until the days of the wine, and the oil until the days of its season. And all that is left therein, thereof, and becomes old, let it be regarded as polluted, let it be burnt with fire, for it is unclean. And thus let them eat it together in the sanctuary, and let them not suffer it to become old. And all the tithes of the oxen and sheep shall be holy unto the Lord, and shall belong to his priest, which they will eat before him from year to year. For thus it is ordained and engraved regarding the tithe on the heavenly tables. Now we know we don't animal sacrifice no more, but it's going to begin in the temple to come. They're going to start sacrificing again, okay? Uh, there's more, there's talk about the red heifer. We could go into that later, okay? So it will be restored in order for the Lord to return back, okay? So there will be sacrifices once again with animals. So 16, and on the following night, on the 20th, on the 22nd day of this month, Jacob resolved to build that place and to surround the court with a wall and to sanctify it and make it holy forever for himself and his children after him. And the Lord appeared to him by night and blessed him and said unto him, your name shall not be called Jacob. This is very powerful. Your name shall not be called Jacob, but Israel shall they name your name. This is when the change of name came about uh, from Jacob to Israel. And this is where we have Israel today. Your name shall not be called Jacob, but Israel shall they name your name. And he said unto him again, I am the Lord who created the heaven and the earth, and I shall increase you and multiply you exceedingly. And kings will come out from you, and they will judge everywhere, wherever the foot of the sons of men have trodden. Now, I made a comment here, okay? It says right here, kings will come out from you, and they will judge everywhere, wherever the foot of the sons of men have trodden. This also concerns the end, okay? I just made a funny note on here. Uh, Richard B. yesterday, <laughs> Richard B. was listening, okay? I don't think he was commenting, but he was listening. And uh, he made a comment on yesterday's uh, video, okay, on the, not yesterday, the day before uh, when we did uh, uh, the study and he popped in at the last second and I saw and I, I put it up, okay, Richard B., uh, we prayed that he was okay and he did return back, uh, even if he was just listening, but he did make a comment at the end. So uh, one time in one of our live streams, uh, Richard B., I know maybe you guys don't know who he is, but he was a regular all the time. And so uh, Richard B., uh, he, he he popped in. But we, at one point in one of our studies, he says, I want to be a king, okay, in the new heavens and the new earth, okay, in the kingdom, the millennial reign. Now, we're going to be judges, okay? Uh, kings, uh, we might be, there's kings over nations, okay? So whoever he's going to place, because we know that he's going to give us some kind of title, uh, depending, okay? So can we be placed a king over nations or a leader? Yes, we can. We know we're going to judge the angels, okay? Which angels? That's that's another topic, but we know we're going to judge the fallen ones, the fallen angels, okay? Not the angels in heaven, but the, the fallen ones, okay? So it says uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 through 3, okay? 2 and 3. Don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world, okay? And since you are going to judge the world, can't you decide even these little things among yourselves? Don't you realize that we will judge angels? So you should surely be able to resolve ordinary disputes in this life, okay? Now, once again, I'm just going to make a note here. If you don't know, I'm going to make a, um, a comment, Okay, I've been doing a series, okay, calling Finally Following God's Laws. And no, they have not been abolished. I'm not going to get deep into that right now. But right here, what do you think we're going to be judging? We as believers are going to judge the world. Where in order to be a judge, okay, just look at a court system. 
the court system right now, there's a set of laws, right? If you get in trouble for something, it doesn't matter if it's domestic, civil, whatever, you got to go to court. So in the court, what do they have? They have laws, okay? Perfect example. They have laws, right? And so the law is applied to what you uh, you did, okay? Why you're there. If it's against you, they're saying, okay, you broke this law. You broke this section of whatever section. You broke this law. And they judge you by it, okay? Now, we have a set of laws, and they're God's laws. So I'm making videos going through all the laws of God, the gods, the, the laws of the land, the dietary laws, all those are still very much in effect because right here we'll be judging according to whose laws. We will be judging the world, okay? By whose laws? By God's law, okay? So that's how important God's laws are, his commandments. There has to be a book of laws in order for us to judge from. Okay, they're his laws that we're going to be judging the world by. They're his laws that we're going to be judging the angels by. Because we know the angels trespassed. And we know they trespassed against God's law. So these are the same laws. This is why it's so very important. Go through the videos that I'm making. 613 laws of God. Can we fulfill them? Are they important? His ordinances. All this. His statutes. So please go to those videos. Start from video number one. We've been going through all them. Get familiar with them. Get familiar with them. Amen. Okay, so I just thought I would mention that. And we must abide here on earth. Remember, we're set apart. We're not from this world. And we have laws, okay? We have laws of God. We are his children. We abide by his ways, not man's laws, not his ways. Of course, we have to abide by his laws, but there's certain laws within the government that aren't our laws. They're not our. They don't apply to us. Uh, there's certain laws being passed that are clearly against God's laws, and we don't have to abide by those laws. Just like abortion and all those, we don't have to abide by those because we're set apart. We're children of God. We have our set of laws. We have our feast. We have our system, which is not the world system right now. It is God's system, okay? So we are to be following that, and the Lord's watching us, amen? The Lord is watching us as believers, okay? So he's going to judge the church, too, by the same laws. He's going to judge the, the, the church with his justice, his set of laws. He's going to judge the church, and he's already starting to do it, okay? But the, there's going to come judgment against the church, okay? Very, very, very crucial very, very important. Okay. So here we go. We'll pick it up. So I thought I'd make, make that. Um, I thought I'd make that comment here because it says they Kings will come out from you and they will judge everywhere, wherever the foot of the sons of men have trodden. Okay. And it says, and I shall give to your seed, all the earth, which is under heaven. Okay. I shall give to your seed, all the earth, which is under heaven. This is his, his coming kingdom. Okay, he's going to give it to us. Your seed, which is the seed? The seed of Jacob, the seed of Israel, the bloodline where, where Jesus, Yeshua came. We've been grafted in. We're one commonwealth with Israel. So on that day, we have already been joined, adopted by Israel, by God's people. We've been grafted in, adopted into the, the, to the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, into Israel. And then that day, we're going to be Israel. If you're a believer in Christ, you've been already uh, grafted into Israel. You already are uh, grafted into Israel. You have become Israel, okay? It doesn't matter what race you are. You have not become a Jew, but you became an Israelite. You became Israel. I hope you can understand this. It says, and I shall give to your seed all the earth which is under heaven, and they will judge all the nations. Now, Richard B. said he wanted to be a king, okay? And so I laughed about it. I said, well, maybe, okay? So it says, and they will judge all the nations according to their desires, okay? And after that, they will get possession of the whole earth and inherit it forever, okay? So I made a comment here. As we see, this is the new heavens, the new earth. Uh, there's 1,000-year millennial reign with, with Christ here on earth with us. And so this is an intermittent period. And then we have the new heavens and the new earth forever and ever. Okay. But it kicks off 
in the beginning of the millennial kingdom reign. Okay, so I found that just like I'm saying, these golden nuggets within this book. Okay, it's just amazing because this is truth. This is why I'm saying this, this chapters, this book, this is, you can't say this is not truth. This is where our Bible teaches. Okay, so here we go. I made a note here. And this is from, this is according, it's like scripture, okay? I, I say it's in here and it coincides with the book of Revelation, okay? Talking about forever and the new heavens and the new earth, okay? So I put here eschatological, 1,000, one day is like 1,000 years. 1,000 of our years is one day to the Lord. Also very important. It's a fact, okay? It's found in 2 Peter chapter 3, okay? It's a fact. Peter says it's a fact, okay? That one day of our of, of, of the Lord's day is like 1,000, and that's how we should measure time, is by his jubilees and by his count of 1,000 being like a day, because he says, I'm not slow. He says, people say it's slow, that, I, that, that I'm being slow about coming back. He says, it's not slow. It's only been six days for him, okay? Because there's a count. There's a count, God's calendar, okay? So we're in that sixth day. So you could actually say, oh, he's coming back in a few hours according to his time. So if a thousand, thousand years is one day to the Lord, what is uh, 200 years? Just say, just say as an example, what's 200 years? If a thousand years is one day of ours, okay, is a thousand years to the Lord. I mean, a thousand years of ours is one day to the Lord. What is uh, two, 200 years? It's like a couple hours, okay? So it's he's not being slow. He's coming back soon, okay, according to his timetable. So it says eschatological, eschatological 1,001 day, year, millennial reign of our Lord. So you could say one day will be a thousand years of the millennial kingdom here on earth, okay? It says one year millennial reign of our Lord Jesus, Yeshua, then comes, then comes the new heavens and the new earth. New Jerusalem, covenant fulfilled. Remember the covenant, the new covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the Davidic covenant are the same, okay? They've just been tweaked out a little bit uh, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to the Davidic covenant. The Lord came. The Lord will come again, okay? Starting the new covenant in the new millennial kingdom. That is the new covenant, okay? And it will be fulfilled. And then a part of the new covenant is also the new heavens and the new earth, which we're going to be reading right now, okay? So I put new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, covenant fulfilled. Revelation 20, 1 through 6, and Jerusalem, uh, uh, New Jerusalem, Revelation 21, tw uh, 21, verse 1, okay? The thousand years. It says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit. Let me fix that, okay? Because it says pita. <laughs> uh, let me fix that, okay? So it says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. A thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked, so Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were finished. This is the intermittent, intermittent period I was talking about with the Lord here on earth, okay? He's going to be um, teaching. We're going to be teaching. There's nations, okay? I don't want to get heavy into this, but there's survivors. There's other nations which are going to abide by his ways and his laws. One way or another, one way or another, the Lord's going to have his way, and it's going to be in the millennial kingdom, amen? It says, which he then shut and locked. So Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were finished. Afterward, he must be released for a little while. Right there, little while. What is a little while? Remember, back to God's timing. What would be a little while? Okay, an hour on God's timing. One one thousand years is like is is uh, of ours is one day to the Lord. So a little while could be what. It could be 15 minutes. 
seriously on our end on our on our time it could be a little while a little while it could be right away fast because they do we're going to go ahead and read it okay all right so it says afterward he must be released for a little while then i saw thrones and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge there we go again us right believers and i saw the souls of those who had been beheaded martyrs okay and i saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about yeshua and for proclaiming the word of god they had not worshiped the beast or his statutes we know this is the mark of the beast they did not worship the beast okay and so they lost their lives okay so nor accepted his mark on their foreheads or their hands don't get too caught up into this okay but we know it's going to be has something to do with islam muslim jihad on the forehead and on their hands they all came to life again okay those who have been martyred they all came to life again and they reigned with christ for a thousand years this is the first resurrection the rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. Now, the rest of the dead are those who are dead that did not believe in Christ, okay? Remember, those who have died all the way to the great tribulation, if they don't repent, okay, those souls have to be judged according to their sins. So we're speaking about those who are dead in Christ, those who did not repent, their physical bodies died their souls live on in the place waiting for judgment okay so we know that but we know there's going to be literal people living in the great tribulation we know there's going to be those who survive those who are living in the great tribulation okay so very important to note that okay so it says this first resurrection the rest of the dead did not come back to life so all those who were resurrected are us all of us says the rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. What happens at the thousand years? Remember, Satan is let loose again. And he brings all those souls, okay, all those souls with them. He says there's a lot of them. All the unclean spirits, all those who died in Christ, not repenting, okay, they're going to come all back. And they're going to try to attack the holy city, okay? Some others have a different view on this, but this is my my view that I get from scripture, okay? The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. We're clearly noted what happens after the thousand years. We just read it. Satan is let loose for a while and they come against God's holy people. Once again, okay? It says, blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. This is us. This is, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Once again, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are the first ones in the first resurrection. Very important. The rest of the dead are those who are dead in Christ that reject it, okay? It says, for them, the second death holds no power. For them, the second death holds no power. For us, the second death holds no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years reign with him a thousand years okay so we are going to be there amen revelation 21 1 through 27 this is the new jerusalem new heavens and new earth okay this is not the millennial kingdom okay the millennial kingdom will last forever because we know satan comes against it you could go ahead and read it in the context satan surrounds the, the millennial kingdom surrounds God's people, okay? But God takes them out by fire. There's no war. There's no battle. There's no military battle. God takes them out with fire all at once, fast, dominates them. That's the difference, okay? So it says the new Jerusalem, new heavens, new earth. It says, then I saw new a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. Now, is the whole earth going to disappear? No. What he's talking about, it's a new restored earth. A new restored earth, okay? For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. It says, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, 
God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down. For what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of water of life. So much meaning in here. All who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. I just did uh, uh, on my last video something powerful here. That was taught, okay, on Sukkot by Yeshua himself on the feast of Sukkot, which is the final fall feast of the year. We gather together in his name. We celebrate Sukkot. Okay. The feast of booths. If you can find this in the book of Zechariah, we will be celebrating the feast of booths in the millennial kingdom and the new heavens and the new earth. Okay. Jesus himself, Yeshua taught on Sukkot. Okay, so very interesting. Go to my last video. I just came out yesterday. And this teaching is about Sukkot. All along this Moedim, this divinely appointed feast day, the last of the fall feast. This concerns his return. Okay, the Feast of Trumpets, the, the Day of Atonement, and finally the Feast of Sukkot, which actually enters in. We enter into the millennial, the millennial kingdom and forever. And I give scripture on this in my last video. So it says, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. This ties into Sukkot, okay? And, and I know you might not understand that now, but you got to listen. You got to look at my video if you want further instruction here, uh, because it is the truth. It says, and he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Amen? Amen. It says, but cowards, once again, but cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. They are thrown into the fire of lake of, of, of burning sulfur. That's it for them, okay? Forever, eternal, okay? So that is the second death. Those were all the dead that are judged, okay, for their sins. Remember, the Lord has to judge by his laws. That's why he placed his laws there. So it would be very highly recommended you go through them because that is his system. God's laws, God's ways, God's uh, set days, his Moedim, his statutes, he never abolished them. Okay, so I would recommend that you go through them if you have not already. Okay, so we're going to judge according to those laws. Okay, so we got to get used to them. All right, so all these are against God's laws. Okay, so unbelievers, they're all, they all have to be judged for every sin that they committed from the day they were born. To the day they died without Christ. From the day they were born. From the day they were died without Christ. Because when you believe in Christ. You, your, your slate is white clean. But he watches you after too. Okay. This is why repentance is so important. Okay. And to align with his laws. Okay. So the, all these are those dead. All those are those dead. Okay. That come after the thousand years. Those dead. Okay. Okay. Are, are, are judged according to their sins, according to God's law, okay? So it says, but cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, the corrupt, the murderers, the immoral, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death, okay? Verse 9, then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come with me. I'll show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is this? Okay. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain 
And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and sparkling like a precious stone, like jasper as clear as crystal. The city was the city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. The 144,000 are the tribes of Israel. Go through that teaching. They're going to play a big part in the final week. Okay, a big part. The 144,000 gathered together, uncorrupted, un, uh, uh, untainted, okay, virgins, okay, you could say perfect, purified. They have a lot to do. They are the 12 tribes, okay? This is what we're reading about right now, the 12 sons of Israel. This is why it's so important to today. It's not just history. It plays prophetically in the end days and here in the new Jerusalem and the new heavens and the new earth. So once again, and the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had 12 foundation stones, and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Okay, the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles. How awesome is that? The 12 tribes and the 12 apostles, right? Just amazing, amazing. Just so much depth I could get into right here. It says, the angel, that I, I'm just going to say it, okay? The 12 apostles were when Yeshua came, okay? The Davidic covenant, Yeshua came and he gave us Jews and Gentiles. He grafted us in to the commonwealth of what? The 12 tribes of Israel, okay? So the 12 tribes of Israel are right here in the new heavens and the new earth. The names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates, which are who? It's 144,000. It's the names. It's the it's what we're reading right now. The 12 sons, the 12 tribes come together with the 12 apostles. Okay, together combined, Jews and Gentiles, one in Yeshua, one in Israel. We have become Israel together, one in Yeshua. Amen. We are to abide, abide in God's ways, his laws that he set for them. Okay, his statutes. Okay, so I just want to mention that there. And, and we know this is the new heavens and the new earth. So it says the angel, because some say Israel's no more. Some say Israel is no more. Right here, it's what does it say? They're there. The 144,000, they're there. Israel is not gone. Okay. We have not replaced Israel, not whatsoever. So it says the angel who took, let me take a breath. <laughs> The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. This is amazing in itself. Direct dimensions, okay? This is measuring God's measuring stick that he measures, and it's in detail. Just like the ark, Noah's ark was in detail. The ark of the covenant was in detail. Detail, the, the, the temple on earth, uh, the, the, the uh, blueprint of the temple, those things that are temporary on earth, those things that are just a, a, a blueprint of those real things in heaven, they were given in detail how to make a measurements. The Lord is very precise. It's very precise, okay? So this you could take, you could say this is 100% how this place is going to look, okay? So I've done already the math. It looks like a big cube to me. Some say it's a pyramid, but I say it more looks like a cube. Okay. And uh, so, but it's going to be amazing. Okay. So it says the angel talked to me in his hand, a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates and its wall. When he measured it, he found it was a square as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles. Then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick, according to the human standard used by the angel. Some of your, your translations will have it in cubits, okay, but they already did the math and they did it, put it into uh, uh, just regular standard uh, uh, measurements. And so that's what I have here. Okay. But some of you, some of your translations will say in cubits. Okay. So it says right here, or stadia cubits. 
So anyhow, that's broken down so you could read it more simpler. It says, uh, verse 18, the wall was made of jasper and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones inlaid with 12 precious stones. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a gate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophase, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, and the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the and the Lamb are its temple. Amen. It says, and the city has no need of sun or moon, but there will, it says no need of sun or moon, but there will be a moon there. Okay. I just, that's another, for another teaching, another time, but it says, and the city has no need of sun or moon for the glory of God illuminates the city and the lamb is its light. The nations will walk in its light and the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. And so maybe Richard B. was right. Maybe he could become a king, Richard B. Because <laughs> it says the kings of the world, okay? We know our king, our Lord Yeshua is king of the universe, but there will be kings, okay? It says it right here. So uh, Richard B. says he wants to be a king. Well, maybe Richard B., Maybe, okay? You got to prove yourself here on this earth, right? So it says the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day because there is no night there. And all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So that's not the finish. I remember I told you it was going to be a little long. Uh, so in verse 20, here we go. So I thought I'd put that there because why? It's in the context. And I shall give to your seed and all the earth, verse 19, which is under heaven, and they will judge all the nations according to their desires. And after that, they will get possession over the whole earth and inherit it forever, okay? The 12 tribes along with the 12 apostles. You got, you got to understand this. And he visioned and he finished speaking with him. And he went up from him. And Jacob looked until he had ascended into heaven. And he saw in a vision of the night. And behold, an angel descended from heaven with seven tablets in his hands. And he gave them to Jacob. And he read them and knew all that was written therein, which would befall him and his sons throughout all the ages. And he showed him all that was written on the tablets and said unto him, Do not build this place and do not make it an eternal sanctuary and do not dwell here, for this is not the place. Go to the house of Abraham, your father, and dwell with Isaac, your father until the day of the death of your father, Isaac. For in Egypt, you will die in peace. And in this land, you will be buried with honor in the sepulcher of your fathers, with Abraham and Isaac. Fear not, for as you have seen and read it, thus will it all be. And do you write down everything as you have been, uh, as you have seen and read? And Jacob said, Lord, how can I remember? <laughs> I like this part right here. So <laughs> I can say, David, how can I remember all that? Because I got a bad memory. Uh, Connie, Connie Cook knows I got a bad memory. So it says, and Jacob said, Lord, how can I remember all that I have read and seen? And he said unto him, I will bring all things to your remembrance. And this is why I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, what do you call it? Um, I don't find my memory lost. My memory, when I can't recollect a scripture or something, I used to dwell on it so much. I, it used to really bug me a lot. But some days, some days, some things just come to my mind 
and, it, and it, like I'll be teaching on something and just everything comes out on fire, bam, okay? And then by the end, I finish, I'm like, wow, wow, Lord, <laughs> I know it came from him. He brought things to my remembrance. It's amazing and it's humbling because when I start doing it in the flesh and saying, oh, I know all these things, I know all things, and you get, then you could, then you got, and you're in danger of getting puffed up, saying, oh, I know all this knowledge. I know all this knowledge. I can recite the Bible and memory and da da da. And all of a sudden, it's your knowledge, it's head knowledge. And so I believe the Lord has humbled me. The Lord has humbled me and says, okay, I'm going to bring things to your remembrance when I need you to. But when you want to show off, you want to show off and say all the things that I'm giving you, I'm going to make you forget everything. <laughs> so anyhow, I thought I'd throw that in. Hopefully I'm making you guys laugh, but I'm seriously, I think that's what he does with me, right? So uh, the other day I couldn't find a chapter in Daniel, no matter, <laughs> I lasted three or four, and I went through Daniel so many times. It was funny. But anyhow, so it says all day. So it says right here, and he said to him, I will bring all these things to remembrance. Now, this is scriptural. This is scriptural. Let me see if I put it here on the next one. No, this is scriptural, okay? So we got this in the New Testament, okay? We got this in the Testament, okay? It says, don't worry about, I put right here, don't worry about your memory, David, okay? Amen and amen. So the Lord tells me, don't worry about your memory, David. I'm going to bring those things to mind when I need you to. Remember, we got to rely on the Holy Spirit, okay? Truly, okay? So in Matthew verse, uh, chapter 10, verses 16 through 20, it says, Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and be as harmless as doves. So we're, we're asked to be shrewd as snakes, but harmless as doves. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and the other unbelievers about me. Okay, this is, it will be an opportunity. Okay, and this already begun. This is the Lord telling them, be careful. But it, it started from the day of the Lord. It started from that day forward. The disciples, okay, they were all martyred except for John. It started on that day. Some people say the birth pangs are, are, are haven't started yet. Yeah, they started a long time ago. Okay, but they are culminating. Okay, they're culminating. They're rising. Okay, so that's for another story, another time. But on this context right here, it says you will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and the other unbelievers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. Don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. So that's when I read this, I'm like, thank you, Lord, because I really used to bash my head about my memory. He says, don't worry. I'm going to use you when I need to speak to you, David. I'm going to use you. And I, I always recommend that you ask the Lord to use your vessel for whenever he wants to speak, to speak in and through you. This is this is a, a truth right here. OK, this is evidence that he will speak through you when he needs you to okay so always ask him to use your vessel okay but he has to use a clean vessel once again for it is not you who will be speaking it will be the spirit of your father speaking through you okay we're all we're always supposed to be conduits conduits for his word amen and so um i wanted to make another comment here um but it's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and continue. I'm just going to go ahead and continue. All right. Um, oh, uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and make a comment. What did I say that, that the birth pains already started? This already started. You might say, oh, this concerns the end times, the tribulation. No, no. You got to understand. Connie Cooks lives around a place. Okay. In South Africa, you got to understand in Nigeria, 
You got to understand in Afghanistan, you got to understand in Egypt, you got to understand this persecution has started from that same wicked bloodline all the way from Esau, all the way into Islam, all the way till we have the, 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 um, the Ottoman Empire, the Islamic Empire into the Ottoman Empire until what we see today. Still, there are those being thrown in prisons. There are those who are, are, are facing tribulation, not the great tribulation, but tribulation. Those who are being arrested for their faith. Those who are being persecuted, arrested, put in prisons. As we speak right now, there are believers that are sitting in prisons in China, in North Korea, in these camps. So that has started. This right here, what we read, has started already from the moment the disciples were martyred. It started because of why? Because he says, because you are my followers. It started ever since then. We have to understand ever since then till now. Okay. Uh, and we could go into that subject again, but so many say, they think that this refers to the great tribute. No, this has started already. Just because you live in a nation to where these things aren't going on, like in the United States, you're a believer. Of course, you're not being killed. Of course, you're not being hauled off. Okay, we got religious rights. But in so many places, and the Bible, remember, is Israel-centric. It's all the nations. It speaks of Israel-centric. So you got to understand this. Amen? Amen. So I thought I would uh, share that with you about memory. Okay, if you have memory lapses, don't worry. Don't be too, because the Spirit will use you when He needs you, okay? He will work in and through you, okay? But we got to be clean vessels for in order for Him to do that, okay? So let me pick it up from, um, and He went up from Him, and He woke from His sleep. And he remembered everything which he had read and seen. He remembered everything which he had read and seen. And he wrote down all the words which he had read and seen. So I just put right here, the Lord did it supernaturally. And it brought it and it brought it to his remembrance. Amazing. All that was spoken, he remembered. Okay, every word and he wrote it down. How awesome is that, right? So the Lord can do that. Don't put Lord, the Lord in a box. It says, and he slept. And when he, were, and when he woke up, he remembered everything which he had read and seen in his vision. And he wrote down all the words which he had read and seen. Amen. So verse 27. And he celebrated there yet another day. And he sacrificed thereon according to all that he sacrificed on the former days, and he called its name addition, for this day was added, <clears throat> and the former days he called the feast, and thus it was manifested that it should be, and it is written on the heavenly tables, for that reason it was revealed to him that he should celebrate it, and to add to the seven days of the feast. Right here, I just made a comment, eight feast days, because I just did uh, uh, the Sukkot, the eighth greatest day, uh, when the Lord taught on Sukkot, he mentioned the greatest day, the eighth day. It talks about the eighth day, and that pertains to the new heavens, new earth. So right here, I just put it down because that's what I've been studying, uh, the eight feast days. Okay, so there's going to be an eighth great day. Okay, so that's Sukkot into the millennial kingdom, the eighth day after the seventh day of Shabbat, the 1,000 years, and into the eighth day, okay? Eighth meaning infinity, eternity. The number eight is the eighth day after the seventh day is the eighth day. New heavens, new earth, <clears throat> eternal, okay? The new, we just read it, okay? So you can look at my videos to see what I'm talking about here. So it says, and its name was called addition because that, that it was recorded among the days of the feast days according to the number of the days of the year. And in the night on the 23rd of this month, Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died, and they buried her beneath the city under the oak of the river. And he called the name of this place the river of Deborah, and the oak, the oak of the morning of Deborah. And Rebekah went and returned to her house, to his father Isaac, and Jacob uh, to her house, to his father uh, Isaac. And Jacob sent by her hand rams and sheep and he goats that she should prepare a meal for his father such as he desired. And he went after his mother until he came to the land of uh, Kabratan, and he dwelt there. 
And Rachel bore a son in the night and called his name son of my sorrow, for she suffered in giving him birth. But his father called his name Benjamin on the 11th of the eighth month in the first. This is what I was talking about. Uh, um, I'm having a mind blank. Uh, anyhow, the, the brother that, that was asking about the count, the Jubilee count. Um, anyhow, on the 11th of the eighth month. You got to realize this was God's calendar. So you could like look at your calendar and you say, oh, it was the month of August, the eighth month. You can say, oh, the month of August. No, it's not the month of August. You got to understand we have months according to God's calendar. And it wasn't in August. OK, so very, very, uh, very important. OK, God's calendar is very important. God's timing, God's calendar, God's laws, God's statutes. They're all very important to know, okay? On the 11th of the eighth month, in the first of the sixth week of this jubilee, okay? So they counted jubilees every 50 years. This was the count of jubilees, the book of jubilee. A jubilee was 50 years, okay? So they had a count going. Every 50 years is a jubilee, okay? So that's, you could say, call it that, okay? It's not 49. 49 uh, just to explain to you before we finish this chapter, 49 is not, say if, say if you got to the 49th day, you can't call the 49th day Pentecost. You got to wait for the 50th day. Why is that? So say you're one hour, say you're four hours from completing the 49th day. Is it Pentecost? No, it's not. You're still in the 49th day. So the day after at sunset, it it changes, right? It's the next day, okay? And so that's the day you got to count. It's completion, okay? So very important. It says, uh, the first of the sixth week of, of, of this jubilee. And Rachel died there, and she was buried in the land of Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. And Jacob built a pillar on the grave of Rachel, on the road above her grave. Amen. <laughs> I thought there was more to that, but yeah, he built... Uh, he built a pillar on the grave of Rachel and on the road above her grave. So next on Monday, we'll be continuing uh, chapter 33. Uh, and so with that, blessed be the word of the Lord. The powers of the air are going to give way. The sky will roll, the mountains fade. Redeemed of the King at the end of the age Singing there and not the Lord a son a day Take the scroll and loose its seals Stars fall, earth reel The man with the scepter, the man with the sword The man of the cross will soon be crowned Lord And this night will soon be over And this night will soon be over. So bow your knee and turn your eye. The only one worthy, the only one right. His eyes are like fire and glory, he'll ride to Jerusalem as he rips through the skies. The blood of the Lamb will be our only hope when the plates and the fire and the blood and the smoke fall upon nations and fall upon kings. Way for the end of all things in this night will soon be over and this night will soon be over and the seals and the trumpets and all of the bows have run their course and taken their toll and the last of the wicked have taken their stand before the Lord the Lord's right hand Zion fountain of judgment and burning Open for cleansing for those who are yearning For this night to soon be over For this night to